Yo, yo, what up y'all, Terry Warfield. I hope you're having a good day so far. If this is your first time here, a big fat welcome to you. And if you're part of the fam, you're part of the squad, you came back, welcome back, welcome back to the squad. You know that little clip y'all just watched? I filmed that whole thing in HLG3. And then this video, we're gonna talk about why HLG3, even though I might be late to the party, is now my favorite picture profile on Sony cameras. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes, I gotta let you know, I'm not doing like a super technical, in-depth analysis comparing all picture profiles. I'm not smart enough for that. If you want that type of in-depth analysis, go check out my bro, Gerald Undone's video, which is right up there, where he gives you all of them nitty gritty details. Terry Warfield ain't doing all of that, but what I am gonna do is give you some practical use examples of why, for me, HLG3 is my new favorite picture profile. Now, you can use whatever you want. You don't even have to use picture profiles, right? But if you got a Sony camera, you probably, like me, ended up on this video in this order. You got a Sony camera, you weren't really into picture profiles like that, then you started filming more, then you found out about picture profiles, and then you ended up in the picture profile <laughs> rabbit hole on YouTube, and now you're here, right? <laughs> so basically, that's how I got into picture profiles. Picture profiles are not necessities, however, once you do get into them, it is worth taking a look at them. Now, historically, since I've had an A6300, I've always used either Cine4 or Cine2. I started off using Cine4, which is dope. It's super easy to color grade, looks great right out the camera. However, as my progression, you know, through Sony cameras and picture profiles happened, I found Cine2, which Cine2 had, in my opinion, better highlight roll off than Cine4. So I switched over to Cine2. The next natural progression was S-Log. <laughs> and everybody loves S-Log. And S-Log has its place, right? But for me, I personally couldn't stand it. Because, yes, when you got it right, it was amazing, yo. It provided all types of dynamic range versus regular center profiles. However, it starts at ISO 800. And to get S-Log right, you gotta overexpose it by two stops. And if you don't get that right, your footage does not come out good. It's noisy, it's hard to color grade. Like, S-Log is only really good in control scenarios. For run and gun stuff, it is a complete headache. Even if you're using like an external recorder with built-in LUTs or gamma assist options, like S-Log is just for me, not what I wanted. So, what I did want from S-Log is the dynamic range. What I didn't want is the problems. Enter hybrid log gamma or HLG3 for short. Now, HLG is a gamma that's actually meant for HDR monitors. So you'll see a little bit further down in this video, when we import HLG footage, it looks crazy until the computer interprets it into a regular Rec. 709 format that we know, we love, we use to edit, right? So HLG was never designed to be this awesome S-Log2 replacement. Somebody just tried it and found out like, yo, HLG renders really good skin tones. It's super easy to color grade. It gives you almost as much dynamic range as S-Log2, and the base ISO is only, well, depending on which HLG profile you go with, the base ISO is around 100. So for me, after trying HLG3, realizing that I can stick to lower ISOs, realizing that it gives you so much room to edit with when it comes to pushing and pulling the footage, it's kind of a no brainer to not use, but there's a few small things you gotta do to be able to use HLG3, which is what I'm gonna show you in this video. All right, y'all, real quick. So I just wanna show y'all how to get the HLG3 because you might not know how. Also, how I have mine set up. Now, you can set yours up however you want to. Uh, mine is kind of set up to do most of the editing, meaning color correction and all of that stuff in post. You can customize yours to, you know, give you better colors right out the camera. That's totally up to you. But anyways, uh, real quick, if I go in here, when I go to my picture profiles, you can see it's like 10 different slots in here. Now, these are pre-programmed by Sony, but you can change them to whatever you want them to be. So my PP10 may be HLG3. You can set yours to be S-Log2. You can set it to be whatever you want. But let's just go through my settings real quick. So I'm going to go over. My black level is set to plus 5. My gamma is set to HLG3. Now, as you see, there are four different HLGs. I prefer HLG3. For me, it gives the best skin tones, in my opinion. Also, the colors pop a little bit more. HLG2, in my opinion, is more flatter. Uh, however, it does handle noise better. And then, honestly, I would just stay away from regular HLG and HLG1. 
If we go down to Black Gamma, I left that at middle for range level zero. Knee is set to manual, so I did not change that. Now color mode, you can either do BT2020 or Rec 709. Me personally, I prefer to leave it on BT2020. I think BT2020 handles skin tones a little bit better. Colors look a little bit better, but there are some people who like 709 because they say it gives them a more cinematic look. Again, total personal preference. Saturation, I move down to negative 10. I prefer to add all of my saturation in post. Color phase is left at zero. Color depth, I didn't change any of those. Detail, I have at negative seven for 4K because honestly, Sony 4K is so sharp. It kind of looks electronic. So I put it to negative seven in 4K. And then for 1080p, I leave it at zero. And sometimes I add a little bit of sharpening in post because the 1080p out the Sony is a little bit soft. And then that's it. So that's my PP10, my HLG3. Let's go ahead and hop into Final Cut Pro so I can show you how we do this. Let's go. All right, finally on Final Cut Pro. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to get HLG footage into a usable format that you can edit on your computer that don't look crazy. The second thing is I wanna show you the comparison between Cine 2 and HLG 3, just so you can kinda of see how different they look right out the camera with a little bit of tweaking. And then lastly, I wanna show you that other clip that I told you about where we recover all types of detail from a clip that's pretty much blown out. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I wanna do is grab a clip let's go over here to this video right here so let's grab this one uh just for example sake now the first thing final cut will do is if you're on the latest version it's going to pop up right here on the screen adding hdr clip to sdr project now if you start a new library in final cut pro you can select hdr library however if you don't want to do that this is the second way you can do it. You just take the HLG footage, drop it on a regular timeline, and it's gonna automatically give you this pop-up to let you know that, yo, this is HDR footage and not SDR. So I'm just letting you know that you need to convert this or it's gonna look crazy. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, if you don't have the most recent version of Final Cut Pro, there is a conversion LUT you can use. Actually, there's a bunch of LUTs, but there's one called Lehman LUT that I prefer. Uh, it's $24.99, it's not free. I'll show you what it looks like real quick. So uh, with this clip right here, if we go to our inspector window, which is up here, you can select Lehman LUT as your camera LUT input. That automatically fixes it so it doesn't look crazy because without it, if we turn it back off, look how crazy it looks. Everything is super blown out. The colors just don't look right. And this is a regular clip. Some clips look crazy. But anyways, if you have the most recent version of Final Cut Pro, you won't even need Leaming LUT. All you gotta do is go to your effects browser and there's an effect called HDR Tools. You take this, you drag it over onto your HLG clip. And if we go to our inspector again, now we have up here where you can pick the type of conversion. So we're gonna go to HDR to Rec 709 SDR. And as soon as we do that, then it gives us normal looking footage. So it doesn't look crazy anymore. So that's the first step. Once you do this, you can color grade it as usual. Now with HLG3, you can push and pull these files a lot more than you can regular Cine 2. I'm gonna show you that in one second, but the second thing I wanna show you, now that I showed you how that works, is the differences between um, Cine 2 and HLG3. Now these clips I already have pre-recorded, right? This clip right here is Cine 2. And the only thing I did, if we go up here to a color board, is I tinkered around with the exposure. It was underexposed already. I didn't film it right. And honestly, my color grade is probably not the best, but whatever. I'm just doing this for example's sake. But notice how orange my skin looks. My skin does not look like that by default. I mean, I'm brown skin, but I don't look like a tangerine. Now, I'm not saying that this clip looks bad, but one thing I want to point out, this blue orb over here is actually blue. It's not like a violet color. It's a bright blue, which you're going to see in the next clip. And also, if you just look down here on the floor, you'll see like there's some purple magenta tones down here where in real life, if I turn around and look at it, it's all blue. Let's move over to the HLG3 clip which is right here. Now, this is the same thing. I dropped the conversion effect from our effects browser on top of this clip. And right off the bat, 
this skin tone looks way more natural. It doesn't look orange, it doesn't look crazy. Obviously I did have to color correct it a little bit and again, it's 8-bit footage. You know, I might've pushed it a little bit too far, I might've got some banding or whatever, but you know, we, got, we gotta take what we can get. But the point I'm trying to make is the blue over here is actually blue. Now obviously it's intense, but you know, this got affected by me pushing and pulling the file around. But as you can see, there is no real color shift from the blue here. The colors are much more natural with HLG3. And also, let's just look back over here. Look right here. Look where the highlight areas are and how harsh that is, right? And if we go over here to HLG, how balanced the exposure is on my face. That's why I love HLG3. Now there's one other thing I wanna show you. So I'm gonna take this clip right here, which was extra blown out. And we can see already, look how blown out this is. Now this is HLG3, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna drop HDR tools on top of it. Now I'm gonna show you real quick how much we can push and pull this freaking file. I would have never been able to do this with Cine2 or Cine4. So let me open up a color board and just go to exposure and i'm about to this is crazy watch i'm gonna show you how much i can pull this file and push this file okay imperfect example but you get the point i'm trying to make let me turn this off and then let me turn it on turn it off and turn it back on that is crazy and if i wanted to i could technically push this some more because I'm not even clipping yet. If I keep pushing it, obviously I'm gonna hit my limit, but this is why I'm sold on HLG3. I really want you, if you have a Sony camera, you watching this video, go give HLG3 or two a try. I really think you will be surprised once you get the hang of color grading it. It is amazing how much you can push and pull these files, how much more accurate the, the colors are right out the camera compared to the center profiles, and ultimately how much dynamic range that you can get out of HLG. Like that looks like S-Log type stuff that I just did, and that's out of HLG3 filmed at ISO 160 or something like that. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think, man. I hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time, that's all I got for you today. Today, peace and chicken grease. I am out. Terry Warfield. Peace. Boom.